Now, Irish Pickers is a new TV series that follows the uh, Dublin antiques dealer and history enthusiast Ian Dowling as he hunts down and buys collectibles that tell stories of our country's past. It premieres on Blaze TV, that's on Sky Channel 164, at uh, 9 o'clock, 9pm, this Thursday, the 19th of March. And Ian joins me now in studio. He's brought along some historical treasures from his own collection into the studio to uh, to show us today. You're very, very welcome to the History Show. Thanks for having me, Moz. And uh, a pat on the back for the programme. I uh, was uh, I was sent a link uh, to the programme on Vimeo and I said I will discharge my obligation to my employer. I'll watch about 10 or 15 minutes and I'll probably doze off because I have no interest in antiques or collectibles. And uh, after 10 or 15 minutes, ah, sure, I'll watch a bit more. And then after, and I'll watch a bit more. And I found myself watching the whole thing. It's really, really good. It's beautifully shot. It looks really, really good. And uh, the ensemble cast, very, very engaging. So congratulate. I mean, I would watch, I want to watch the whole series now. Thank you. That's good to hear. Thanks so much, Miles. Um, Okay, so (laughs) you've brought in one pretty extraordinary and pretty macabre uh, piece, which I'm looking at and I'm getting the willies looking at it, because it's Kevin Barry's death mask. That is his actual death mask. Tell me about how you acquired that. I bought this in, a, in an auction um, a couple of years ago and uh, couldn't quite believe my luck really. Um, I know it's it's quite a unique piece. I mean like, like you say it's quite a dark mm. piece but it's also um, a very important piece of, of Irish history. Um, Kevin Barry was the youngest um, person ever to be executed on the island and um, and his death actually was one of the kind of pivotal moments really during the War of Independence and, and uh, not long after people started looking towards the negotiations and um, uh, and the next step I guess was the treaty. So it was kind of, you know, he, he's a... Uh, I, I, I just couldn't believe it when I came across this. I mean, and um, yeah, I snapped it up. I, I think I paid about 3000 for it. Mm. Um, and just tell me, this was in uh, at an auction in, in Kilkenny and there was other Kevin Barry memorabilia which were being sold uh, there. And I mean, so they fetched astronomical prices, didn't they? Um, yeah, I mean, any, any there's, there's very little um, kind of original memorabilia um, that has come onto the market uh, except for the letter, his last letter um, to his... Um, his pals in UCD um, just before he was executed. So you can imagine he was. This is the this is the centenary um, year of his death. A um, hundred years ago, uh, Halloween night, he mm. was sitting in a damp cell writing a letter to his to his pals um, before he met his maker the following morning. And um, that letter achieved about I think it was eighty seven thousand. Um, so yeah, so. That's something you actually would. You, you're, you're never going to sell it. You're not going to sell never going to sell it. No, never going to sell it. Um, but you were saying to me at some point you you may give it to give it to a museum. I, I'd like to give it to a museum at some point. Yeah, I'd like to keep it in the family. But if it if if um, I would I would never sell it. If if I was going if I was going to leave the family, it would go to a museum so that people could enjoy it. Right, you're never going to make a living. Ian. I'm sorry. If you <laughs> behave, behave like that. Spend three thousand yeah. hand, hand it over to a museum. I know. Uh, I get a sense that items from the the War of Independence and the Revolution revolutionary periods particularly catch your attention I presume that's at the moment they are you know people who are collectors are more interested in that kind of thing um yeah I mean it's it, there's always like a good demand for war of independence Easter rising particularly rising I mean like there was on the, on the build up to the centenary um you know, there was kind of a lot of excitement and a lot of stuff going through auction rooms and that's all kind of died down quite a lot ever since uh 2016 after that auction then everything kind of um, calmed down quite a bit but um, anytime I get anything from the War of Independence or or, 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 or Rising or anything from that era um, it sells really well and I'm particularly interested in that kind of era myself so um, you know that kind of helps and I presume that you have identified people who are collectors so you buy the stuff you pay I mean this is one of the interesting things for me about the series you pay a decent price to people who know as you're buying it from them, that you are going to sell it on for a higher price, that you're out to make a to make to make a profit from it. But you presumably have identified a number of people who, oh, I know, I know someone who'll be interested in that, so I know how much they will pay, yeah. so I know how much I'm going to pay. Exactly. Like I've been eleven years now, full time doing it, and you, you you kind of after that amount of time, you, you develop kind of um, contacts and clients who are interested in in different things, and um, so you can kind of match items up uh, when you're on the road with with in your head with people that you mm. that you're, you're your own clients people that you know 
Talking about the War of Independence, you brought a grenade. I hasten to add that it has been well disarmed. Uh, There's no explosive. Nothing's going to happen. It might uh, break break my ankle if it falls off the (laughs) desk or something like that. But that's about the height of it. Tell us a little bit. What what do you know about that? It was was found in Cork. Um, There there was the council actually found it. The army were called. It was... um, deactivated, made safe, and uh, then I got a call about it and asked, was it, would I be interested? And I said, yeah. Now, a very unique piece. I mean, it's not something I've ever seen um, in Ireland, um, but, um, yeah, I just had to had to snap it up. And uh, It's very heavy. It is, isn't it? Extraordinarily yeah. heavy. Yeah. I mean, I cannot imagine. You'd need to have a good arm to yeah. be able to throw that you any would. distance. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, no, just an interesting... And you curious. also had, I'm not sure if you brought it with you, but I think you have a pike head from the 1798 rebellion. Is yeah. That true? Yeah, that was um, in the Wexford episode. We um, met a dealer who had, um, a, a local farmer had gotten in touch with him and he had found it on his land when he was doing some work and uh, he sold it to that dealer and I bought it from the dealer. So it would have been used most likely by the United Irishmen uh, during the 1798 rebellion. Um, it's the, the pike head, so it would have been on top of a, Kind of like sitting on top of a long pole or stick, you know, and that was the kind of weapon of choice by used by peasants in that rebellion. Now you also have these; they're called clocking boards. So uh, they're they're very small. You've got about what half a dozen of them, five of them here. In actual fact, I have in my hand, and uh, they have numbers. They're about they're just a few centimeters rect- rectangular pieces of wood with numbers on them. Explain what those are. So um, I got them up in um, Belfast in the, in the Belfast episode. Uh, we went um, to a dealer who specialised in kind of Titanic memorabilia, um, Harland and Wolf memorabilia. So these are clock-in boards um, used by Harland and Wolf staff. So they were kind of used, they had this system, Harland and Wolf had this system uh, from about 1860 to about 1970. And really... When you when you arrived to Harland and Wolf for your day's work, you were given one of these these boards, as they were called, and um, as you can see, like there's a six digit, just six digit, simple mm. piece, small piece of wood with a six digit number on it, and um, so you would slot this in when you clocked in. That you'd basically. be recorded, so you, your name and number would be recorded on entry, and you would keep this board with you throughout the day, um, and when you when you left then that was that, that's when they calculated your pay when you went to the toilet um, you know you were you were you were recorded time wise there and also um, if you wanted any tools you know like a carpentry tool or whatever it might be they recorded your number then also so it was a, a hugely kind of a, a very important you know piece and you know I guess people who worked on Titanic would have could have actually could have actually used those could have yeah. actually used these yeah. you know so they're a very interesting piece of history and I got these up in Belfast in the in the in in, in that episode which prompts my episode. Ne- my next question which is a, a general question you've ten episodes you tend to concentrate so the one I saw was in 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 Cork and made Cork look I mean Cork is beautiful but it made Cork look really really beautiful which is great. For- from a tourist perspective, uh, Fortune Ireland should be buying the series and selling it. But um, where were the toughest negotiators? Kerry, I'd say. Would be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Kerry. Well, they uh, don't like dubs down there. No, so that's... they don't like some dub coming down trying to make a few bob out of them. And uh, and like uh, the I guess the publican down in Kerry, James Curran in Dingle, was probably one of my favourites. You know, because I love all that kind of crack. Like, mm. You know, some people don't, but I, I love a kind of tough. Um, you know, tough haggling, tough negotiations. Because the haggling takes place, lo- well, not live, but it's it's obviously recorded. But it al- is as live. That is real haggling. It's real, and it's my money, so it's it's, ab- <laughs> it's absolutely genuine. So I don't. I mean, every tenor matters to me, you know, and mm. uh, every tenor mattered to James Kern down in Dingle, and uh, you know, so he was he was actually a publican um, and an antique dealer. And a Kerry man, so that mix was just lethal. Oh, you that know? is an yeah. absolutely lethal mix. Anyway, look, it's a great series. I look forward to uh, to seeing the rest of it. The first episode, as I said, airs this Thursday, the 19th of March on Blaze. So Sky Channel 164. If you don't have Sky, you can stream it on blaze.tv or you can download the app. Um, Ian's own site is rareirishstuff.com. Thanks very much for coming in. Thanks for having me, Miles.